This is located near Melbourne Lake, moving northeast at 45 miles per hour. So if you are in Osage City, Carbondale, Overbrook, Linden, Scranton, or Olivet, uh, you want to uh, make sure to uh, go into your safe shelter right now and uh, to seek shelter. So go to the lowest level of your home under something sturdy, like a staircase or a heavy uh, table. Cover your head with a helmet or a blanket, a pillow. Keep in the shelter until the storm has passed. And uh, you can remember that by the acronym DUCK and uh, stay down there uh, until uh, we give the all clear. Don't forget your shoes as well. And certainly not a good idea to be at venturing out uh, to your place of work if uh, you need to be going to work here shortly. Uh, this is going to be something that I uh, have to uh, be mindful of as uh, we have this tornado warning in effect. So zooming in on this, uh, this is uh, what we've been looking at here in this rotation that's really started getting going. Uh, I just uh, talked about uh, there wasn't a whole lot of rotation in the last weather segment, but that the last couple of frames really getting going. So just the uh, north of Olivet, and so as this continues to work its way to the north and east, it might even go in between Osage City and Linden, but definitely if you're in those cities, you want to seek shelter right now as it uh, would be working its way up uh, to the north and east. So uh, taking a look at uh, the track of that again, uh, we'll put a uh, track on that just so we can see uh, how uh, that is going to be uh, pushing through the area and uh, putting a uh, track on this moving to the northeast at 45 miles per hour. So. Uh, let's see, here's the track here. I'm moving to the northeast at 45 miles per hour, and uh, that is uh, going to be uh, getting into the Olivet area uh, very shortly. So, let's uh, take a look at uh, what we have here with this uh, tornado warning uh, that is uh, continuing to uh, push up to the north and east. Carbondale and Overbrook, you're on the outer edges of that warning, so that would indicate uh, being 615 being the time frame that this expires, being up there around that time. So you have at least a little bit of time to get down there, but this is definitely uh, a little bit unusual here in northeast Kansas. We typically do not uh, get uh, some severe thunderstorm, or we don't get tornado warnings really uh, during this time of the day. But uh, we talked about this yesterday, and this is uh, definitely something that uh, we have to keep a really close eye on as it continues to uh, work its way to the north and east. So you saw that there wasn't a whole lot of rotation uh, over the last couple of frames, but since then it is uh, showing that uh, rotation uh, pretty good. Now, now, typically we would see that uh, green and red uh, together, and that would indicate that rotation, but we're getting a little of that blue as well. Uh, I'm going to stop this so we can kind of see where that rotation is uh, within this uh, time frame. And then uh, let's see if we can put on the warnings. I'm not sure why the warning polygon went away. But uh, going back to the reflectivity and uh, showing where that uh, storm is with that polygon as it continues to, you don't see a whole lot of that uh, rotation within reflectivity. Sometimes we get that uh, hook echo in the reflectivity, and so that's why we kind of have to look at uh, different radar modes, if you will, like that velocity, which I showed you to know where exactly that rotation is and where exactly that tornado would be if there is one on the ground. But at least at this point in time, it is just uh, radar indicated and uh, not really producing a whole lot of uh, hail with it. Obviously, it would be producing the uh, strong winds uh, because if a tornado were to occur within that, uh, but certainly the heavy rain uh, would be what we're looking at. And see if there's any possible debris with it if we go to the uh, debris mode. And typically what we would see in debris mode if there was an actual tornado and picking up debris is some blue colors. And we're really not uh, seeing that. Uh, so uh, right now we're not seeing anything significant as it uh, pushes its way up to the north and east. So going back uh, to the velocity velocity and we'll go ahead and stop that so we'll uh, see where that rotation is and so it's just to the uh, northwest or southwest rather of uh, Linden so if we can put a distance on that on uh, how far away that uh, potential tornado is from Linden it's a little over uh, four miles 4.2 miles or so uh, where that rotation is at least on this last frame obviously this uh, could change uh, based on uh, where it is right now so that could certainly be a little bit closer maybe even less than four miles at this point in time in the Linden area okay so uh, going back uh, to the loop and we can get that to clear out as well with the uh, mileage and uh, as it continues to work its way to the north and east it is headed more towards 
Linden than Osage City. But again, if you're in Osage City, you still want to make sure that uh, you're in that uh, safe shelter as well, as uh, we're still keeping an eye on that uh, rotation to where it might uh, create another rotation. We're monitoring that just to the east of Linden. It's not really a whole lot right now, but certainly something that uh, bears watching as well. I just wanted to zoom out and uh, take a look at what else uh, we have. Uh, you can see most of this is uh, green south of I-70. That's because it's moving towards the radar site in Maple Hill while in the red. It's moving away from the radar site, so that's why you're getting more red north of I-70, but uh, we're not seeing any green north of I-70 either, and so that's the rotation that we're getting. All right, so I'm hearing the tornado siren here in the background, which means there's an update from the Weather Service, so go ahead and read what that says here. So they're going to continue the uh, tornado warning for that. Uh, it's still radar indicated. Carbondale, Overbrook, Linden, and Scranton, Scranton are still in the uh, path of this uh, tornado warning. And this is moving north at 40 miles per hour. And uh, again, this is going to be very, very close uh, to the Linden area. As uh, let me zoom in on that once again and taking a look at that rotation near the Linden area as it uh, continues to work its way closer to the city. So, uh, Linden, uh, if you are not in your safe shelter right now, you need to go there immediately because there's no doubt that if there is a tornado that gets produced from the storm, uh, it will be in Linden at this uh, current moment. And as it continues to work its way to the north northeast, of course, it uh, looks like it is more on. Uh, uh, on, the, on the path towards Overbrook and Carbondale versus Osage City and Burlingame, but uh, still want to be mindful of that. Let's see. Tight circulation continues about three miles southwest of Linden and Osage City. Okay, that's what the National Weather Service is mentioning in chat. So we're also uh, they're seeing the same thing with that rotation as well. So going back uh, to the reflectivity, just to give you an idea of uh, this particular warning polygon, and um, we're really not seeing that rotation within it. That's why I'm not necessarily showing reflectivity as much, but I wanted to show it to you because it, it does show the polygon of uh, where this tornado warning is. So Osage City, you are actually outside of the uh, warning, but uh, Linden, Carbondale, and Overbrook, uh, you are within that warning, uh, and um, we'll certainly be keeping an eye on that in the next uh, 15 minutes or so uh, with this warning being uh, continuing. All right, so going back to uh, velocity and showing uh, where that uh, rotation is, we'll go ahead and put this into the uh, current uh, mode here without the loop so you can see uh, where exactly that uh, circulation is going to be. And we'll continue to keep an eye on this to see how far north and east it gets. So if you're wondering, is this going to continue past 615, uh, maybe up towards uh, southeastern portions of Shawnee County? I don't know. That's, it's what we have to do. We have to watch the radar and uh, keep an eye on the storm, see how they behave within the uh, environment. Again, we have a tornado watch for much of northeast Kansas going until 9 a.m. this this morning, so it is certainly possible, but uh, we just don't know, and we're just going to have to take it uh, on a minute by minute basis with keeping an eye on uh, the storms uh, for that. That is, uh, other than the uh, severe thunderstorm warning that is attached to this tornado warning in Coffee Lane in Osage County, uh, that is all of the uh, current active warnings that uh, we have in the uh, area right now. So that's uh, really the only storm that we have to worry about at this uh, time. Otherwise, uh, going through the rest of Northeast Kansas, uh, indicating uh, nine severe thunderstorms, especially north of I-70, even uh, some of the heavier downpours that are occurring in the Marysville Seneca area, nothing severe from that. And then further down to the uh, south, uh, not seeing a whole lot of activity down there, but some storms certainly are uh, existing and pushing up uh, to the north and east. So as it uh, gets into the environment of this uh, potential tornado threat that we're in right now, especially with that tornado watch going until 9 a.m., uh, that is certainly something that uh, we'll have to definitely keep an eye on through the morning commutes. So uh, let's go back to uh, where the circulation is now. And uh, zooming in on uh, what we can see with the circulation in the Linden area. So you can see there's Highway 75 in Linden, and it's uh, pretty much uh, going to be at, uh, pretty much in between Osage City and Linden with this circulation. This uh, warning continues to go until 6.15. And uh, this is the third tornado that has, uh, that has dropped in the uh, Kansas area. I'm just going back uh, to the Storm Prediction website just uh, 
verify the other reports across the state with the tornadoes. I know we had one in Eureka uh, shortly before the newscast started at uh, 4.30, and then we've also had one in Smith County in Athol, uh, well, 13 miles north of Athol in north central Kansas uh, that occurred uh, in the 3 o'clock hour. And so we've uh, already had a couple of tornadoes across uh, the state of Kansas, and that's the, those are the only tornado ports across the country so far uh, for uh, the last 24 hours. So as we continue to uh, keep an eye on this tornado warning, I would think that there might, well, they just had an update five minutes ago, so uh, probably won't be an update for another five minutes. But again, Carbondale, Overbrook, Linden, and Scranton definitely needs to use caution and go into your uh, indoor, uh, into your safe spot and uh, stay there. And uh, if perhaps uh, it continues to work its way to the north and east, I'll go ahead and put the warning back on here, uh, the warning polygon. Uh, I'm not saying that it's going to continue the circulation, but if it does, we're talking about 615 to 630 on if the storm continues its uh, the rotation, southeastern portions of Shawnee County may be in a tornado warning. It may miss Topeka, uh, but uh, perhaps uh, southeastern portions of Shawnee County or at least southwest Douglas County could be in this warning if it gets extended uh, downstream, if you will, if that uh, rotation does continue. All right, so I'm, I'm hearing the siren again from uh, the back here, which means that there is another update from that. So let's see what we have here as it continues with the uh, tornado warning. Let me get that open here so you can see what it says here. Uh, it says located three miles west of Linden, moving north at 35 miles per hour. Uh, still the same cities that are in the path of this, Carbondale, Overbrook, Linden, and Scranton. This is still radar indicated, so no reports uh, of this uh, dropping into a tornado. But you can see the last frame there that it uh, really lost a lot of that rotation. You see that it was really producing that uh, blue and the red uh, together, but now in the last frame, uh, we really lost that and so I'm not saying that uh, there still can't be a tornado that exists within it but the uh, probability is a lot lower now within that last uh, frame if you will on uh, not giving us that nice rotation that it did a little bit earlier and of course we are getting close to at least a little bit of daylight out there right now so at least that uh, it gives us a higher probability that if there actually was a tornado uh, it would be reported on the ground uh, from uh, the public or law enforcement or emergency management and so that's the good news as we get closer to uh, daybreak and sunrise uh, with this tornado watch that continues until 9 a.m. for much of northeast Kansas if there actually was a tornado on the ground uh, unless it's been covered by the heavy rainfall which we do have as well if we go back to reflect uh, most of which uh, we might be able to see, but it's very possible we may not be able to see it within this activity because of all the heavy rainfall. So uh, that's also something to be aware of that depending on where uh, these uh, potential tornado warnings and circulation do exist, that uh, we may not be able to even see if there is a tornado on the ground or not uh, because of the heavy rain and it may be rain wrapped. And so definitely something that uh, bears watching as well. So Carbondale and Overbrook, uh, it's getting awfully uh, close to you with that circulation as it continues. Uh, I'm going to, let me see if I can do this at the same time, see what I have on my Empori camera to see if my, we might be able to see anything uh, with that. Uh, but uh, we could certainly see maybe a little bit of that uh, storm from the Empori camera. But this uh, tornado warning going until 615, and that is the only warning in the area, other than that severe thunderstorm warning, uh, just uh, to the southwest of that uh, tornado warning. And uh, all right, so I'm going to be panning my camera around just the Emporia area. I'm going to keep the radar on for you to continue to monitor, but I'm not seeing a whole lot. It is still a little bit uh, dark uh, right now, so uh, it's not showing a whole lot unless you have the uh, lightning strikes within the cloud cover. So I'm not seeing a whole lot uh, from the Emporia camera right now, so uh, it is uh, certainly something where it may be a little bit too far away as well to be able to see a whole lot anyway, as uh, Emporia is certainly well off to the uh, south and west of where that rotation would be. But uh, going back uh, to the uh, rotation to see if uh, there's an update in the radar, see if there's any potential rotation that uh, has reemerged, if you will. Going back to that, so... Uh, it's not great, uh, but it, uh, it's showing at least uh, maybe a little bit of something around the Linden area. Let's see, an update from the Weather Service. First circulation west of Linden seems to be occluding or weakening, but another one developing just to the uh, west of uh, Vassar. So, um, 
I'm not saying a whole lot uh, there, but uh, certainly something that uh, certainly bears watching. But uh, if this were to continue with the uh, weakening, uh, we may not see uh, a reissuance of this tornado warning once it does expire at 615. Now, that doesn't mean maybe a half hour from now a storm moves into an environment or it starts to rotate a particular storm and we might get a new tornado warning. So, again, just something to be aware of. We do have that tornado watch uh, for much of northeast Kansas going until 9 a.m. today. And so as uh, we're getting closer to the commute, going to work, going to school, uh, just uh, keep an eye on uh, the latest radar. Of course, uh, we'll be on for th uh, 13 News this morning, uh, through 7 o'clock. And, uh, of course, uh, we'll be on uh, during the bottom and top of the hour for CBS Mornings. Of course, if there is a tornado warning, we'll be on wall to wall. But uh, we'll certainly be keeping an eye on uh, everything going on within these storms uh, through the mid-morning hours. Uh, let's go back to reflectivity, and I'll just show you what we have going on for the rest of northeast Kansas as uh, we continue with that uh, tornado warning and severe thunderstorm warning in our southern communities for the next 10 minutes. Otherwise, the rest of northeast Kansas just getting uh, some non-severe thunderstorms. Some of the heavier or, or the stronger storms, especially in Marshall County, uh, may have uh, some small hail or gusty winds with it, but it is still below severe weather criteria, so no warning is issued from that. And then uh, looking downstream, uh, oh, we're not uh, seeing a whole lot uh, down to our south, but getting a few isolated storms uh, in the uh, southwest of our Vune area that as it continues to work its way northeast, that may be something to watch out for because uh, those storms are a little bit more isolated. They're not within uh, storm activity like uh, some of the storms right now here in northeast Kansas. And so we'll keep an eye on those isolated storms that are by themselves, if you will, to where if they start moving into our area in that uh, potential uh, rotation, uh, that could increase the tornado potential for some of those storms that are getting close to our viewing area that uh, around the Council Grove and Pori area. So zooming in, uh, we'll go back to the uh, velocity and see if we have anything uh, with respect to its rotation. And uh, zooming in that, you can kind of see a little bit of that rotation as it worked its way up uh, closer to Osage City, but have, uh, have really lost that uh, rotation and the uh, velocity uh, over the last uh, couple of frames. And so we're not seeing a whole lot there. They are still going to continue it. Uh, they just updated the warning again. And uh, I don't think there's anything new from that. It's still radar indicated, still moving to the northeast at 45 miles per hour. It is located four miles northwest of Pomona Lake. And so uh, just something to be mindful of. Carbondale and Overbrook, uh, let me go back to the uh, warning polygon so you can see the new update from the polygon so you can see what uh, we have because they did update the uh, polygon, which means Osage City and Linden, you are in the all clear. So if you are in Osage City or Linden, uh, you do not have to be in your safe shelter anymore. Yes, you are still getting storms. Yes, you are still in a severe thunderstorm warning, but you are not in a tornado warning. So you are fine to uh, come out of your safe shelter. If you're in Carbondale or Overbrook, you need to stay in your shelter for another uh, seven minutes or so as uh, this storm continues to work its way to the north and to the east. So going back to Velocity now and uh, seeing uh, what we have as far as any circulation. We're not seeing a whole lot, so we're seeing uh, some bright colors, uh, especially within the blue and the green. And that just maybe might indicate uh, some uh, heavy pockets of some strong winds within that. But as far as actual rotation from a potential tornado, I'm not seeing it. So uh, you still want to stay in your safe shelter if you're in Carbondale and Overbrook. Uh, but looking at uh, the radar, it is definitely losing that uh, potential tornado and circulation, even though the tornado warning is still in effect for another seven minutes. You just want to stay in there just in case. You never know. Uh, sometimes it uh, may diminish with its uh, rotation, and then it picks back up again as it continues to work its way to the north. But if this is going to continue with the trend, I do not expect uh, reissuance of the tornado warning past uh, 615 to where then uh, we can go back into um, 13 News this morning with a news update. But uh, with this, uh, as it continues uh, to work its way to the north and east, just seeing the velocity for the rest of northeast Kansas, uh, just seeing a lot of blue, or red up uh, north of I-70, uh, nothing as far as any uh, green showing up with that, uh, which would indicate uh, winds going towards the radar in Maple Hill uh, right there. And uh, we're just not seeing a whole lot of uh, circulation anymore from that. And so I would not expect there to be 
any reissuance of any tornado warnings. Uh, there might be a few severe thunderstorm warnings uh, in the near future, but once this uh, tornado warning uh, does expire at 615, uh, I think we, we might get at least a little bit of a brief break. That does not mean we're out of the woods yet, though. Uh, we do still have that uh, tornado watch going until 9 a.m. for most of northeast Kansas to where as these storms continue to work its way to the uh, north and east, and uh, they may start to become a little bit more isolated as uh, we're starting to see some of that trend as well. Uh, that might increase the threat that some storms uh, could produce uh, another possibility of rotation and another tornado warning possible tornado. But uh, so far, uh, we're starting to see that uh, wind down, at least in the short term, uh, even within the tornado warning uh, down to our south. All right, so going back uh, to the velocity and taking a look at what we have uh, with that uh, particular storm as uh, we're just about uh, five minutes uh, away from uh, this warning being allowed to expire and uh, for this uh, warning to uh, really not see much within that. But uh, we will continue with uh, monitor that storm specifically because that was the same storm that produced that tornado in Eureka and continued to push up to the north and east. So it's uh, that storm that has had a history of producing either a tornado and or a tornado warning. And so as that works its way to the north and east, we'll be keeping an eye on uh, Shawnee and uh, portions of Douglas County, Jefferson County as it works its way up to the north, just in case. I'm not saying that there's gonna be a tornado warning in those areas. Uh, we may not get any more tornado warnings once this one expires, but it is uh, certainly something that uh, bears uh, watching uh, for the area. So going back uh, to the home and going uh, back to uh, the reflectivity on uh, these storms that uh, will continue to produce some much needed rainfall. We definitely need the rain as well. So we're getting some uh, nice rainfall for many spots as well, getting at least a quarter inch out of some of these uh, stronger storms uh, for many spots with uh, how much rain has fallen within it. And we'll continue with this activity over the next couple of hours with that tornado watch expiring at uh, 9 a.m. for Northeast Kansas. Um, we may see a few lingering storms even after that, uh, closer to 10, 11 o'clock. Uh, but then after that, uh, we should be in the clear for any uh, uh, more of the dangerous storms in the area, even if we do get an isolated uh, shower thunderstorm this afternoon. So uh, just keeping an eye on uh, the National Weather Service chat or the update uh, to these warnings as it uh, gets close to the time of the expiration on uh, both the severe thunderstorm warning and uh, the tornado warning. Now, uh, yesterday it looked like uh, that there was that potential to get some very, very large hail uh, for the region, but uh, that n n never really materialized, at least in northeast Kansas. Uh, got some big hail and uh, some other portions of the region, but nothing as significant as uh, what it looked. So that's good. Uh, we were able to uh, not uh, be able to get in that. All right, so the National Weather Service is uh, allowing this tornado warning to expire and has weakened considerably, as we've seen uh, with the velocity. Uh, very, very weak rotation, so it is going to expire here in the next couple minutes, but uh, we'll certainly, as I mentioned, keep an eye on uh, what to expect uh, within that uh, particular storm because it has had a history of that uh, particular warning and uh, once that expires uh, we should be warning free both in the severe thunderstorm warning and the tornado warning but uh, once we get through uh, a new segment are you guys ready for a quick news segment uh, maybe uh, on the next weather segment we'll uh, see if uh, we have any more warnings that uh, do get issued uh, beyond these warnings expiring otherwise uh, once those warnings expire we're just dealing with some moderate to heavy rain we'll take a look at how much rain we've had so far uh, with these storms uh, for the last couple of hours as well all right, there's a new tornado warning. Let me get back uh, to my radar here that just came out as I was tossing to uh, you. All right, so we have a tornado warning. This is for Osage County and uh, Shawnee County. We'll get the radar here showing up here in just a second. This uh, will not include uh, Topeka. So uh, let me get to the uh, warning polygon here. All right, so here we go. So if you're in Topeka and your weather radio is going off, you do not have to worry. There is no threat to the Topeka area. But let me read uh, what we have here. Going until 645, and this is going to be a severe thunderstorm capable of producing a tornado located near Overbrook, moving northeast at 45 miles per hour. And this is going to be for uh, the main cities in Richland, Overbrook, and Clinton Lake. So uh, southeastern portions of Shawnee County, uh, 
will certainly be in there. So this is going to be uh, going in, uh, until 645. And so you can see you're not seeing much in the way of uh, rotation uh, from reflectivity. So uh, going to uh, velocity and seeing what we have from that. And uh, okay, there we go. You can see that uh, velocity and uh, that uh, green and red uh, together. Uh, let me uh, stop that now. So that's a pretty good uh, rotation uh, couple there uh, near the Overbrook area. So uh, that's where you'll need to really make sure that uh, you're in that safe shelter in uh, that area. And then, of course, in the other cities uh, further up to the uh, north and east as it continues to work its way to the uh, northeast. Now, as far as Shawnee County is concerned, it may just go over rural area, but if, especially if you are in uh, the southeastern uh, portions of uh, the area, I'll bring up the warning polygon again just so you can see it. So uh, there's no major cities to come see your right on the edge of uh, that warning polygon, uh, but uh, a lot of that would be in rural area. But certainly if you're in it, uh, we certainly want to make sure that uh, you are heading to, into your safe shelter uh, from that uh, storm. So once again, going to your lowest level of your home, putting something sturdy underneath, uh, going underneath something sturdy, and, uh, staying there until the uh, storm has passed and uh, stay in that uh, shelter, covering your head with a helmet, blanket, or pillow. Don't forget your shoes. Now, uh, it's certainly, I'm just looking at uh, what we have here on Weather Service Chat. So there are no sirens in those areas to sound, so uh, you will not hear any sirens in Shiny County because of that. Okay, uh, so I'm just uh, looking at that uh, from the Weather Service Chat. But I definitely want to make sure that uh, if you are in the uh, path of this uh, tornado, uh, that you are seeking shelter immediately. So... Okay, so here we go. Here's that uh, tornado warning that uh, just updated here. Douglas, Osage, and Shawnee County uh, within this uh, warning. So, uh, again, it just updated. This is three miles south-southwest of Richland, moving northeast at 45 miles per hour. Still radar indicated, but as we're getting closer to uh, daylight, uh, we'll certainly have uh, eyes on this uh, storm from emergency management, fire department, police department, uh, emergency personnel that would be able to see it, uh, unless it's rain-wrapped, but uh, we would be able to have a little bit better a chance of seeing it as we get closer to daylight. But Richland and Clinton Lake, uh, those are the areas of, uh, of uh, cities that need to take shelter from that. And uh, this will continue to work its way to the north and east. If the circulation would continue, you can see uh, Lee Compton is uh, going to be on the path uh, just directly to the north of this uh, warning. So I'm not saying this is going to continue, uh, but this storm has had a history. And this is the same storm that produced a, a weak tornado are briefly touching down in the Eureka area at about uh, 4.30, 4.45 early this morning. And so this, is the, uh, this has a history of producing rotation and uh, it could even produce a tornado. So if you're worried about that, uh, LeCompton, uh, just be aware that as we get closer to 6.45, if this uh, rotation still does exist, uh, that you may need to take shelter about that time. This, of course, is going along I-70. So I would uh, think that uh, between, I would say, 635 to 650 or so, 7 o'clock, do not be driving along I-70 because of that. You need to stay off of I-70 within this area uh, between Topeka and Lawrence. Do not drive down I-70 uh, at this time, certainly um, as long as this warning does exist. So uh, keep that in mind as well. So hold off on that and uh, do not be driving along I-70 at this time as long as this warning does exist. So we'll see if we can get uh, an update on that uh, velocity here shortly. In the meantime, uh, let's take a look at what we have uh, for the rest of northeast Kansas across uh, the area. And uh, that is our only warning across the area. And you can see that uh, some moderate to heavy rain does exist uh, farther back to the west, uh, but nothing severe from that. And uh, this is our only severe storm that uh, we have to deal with. Of course, uh, being that it is a tornado warning, I need to make sure that you're going into your safe shelter. So... Going back uh, to the velocity, and you can see the circulation at Weaken, and then it picked back up again, and taking a look at that last frame, uh, and now it's uh, kind of diminishing again. So that's what we have to deal with. Sometimes it does that. Uh, to, it all of a sudden uh, goes away with some of the circulation, and then it comes back up. So the latest circulation on that is not as impressive as uh, what it just was, uh, but you can see the latest circulation uh, just to the north of Overbrook as it continues to work its way up uh, to the north. So uh, looking at our Capital Federal Life Storm Tracker and the reflectivity once again and showing that uh, storm continuing uh, to push to the north and to the east uh, with that uh, rotation. 
So uh, taking a look at uh, what we have uh, within that. Again, we do have this uh, tornado watch uh, going until 9 o'clock uh, for most of northeast Kansas. And so even if this uh, warning were to expire at uh, 645, uh, we are not out of the woods completely because of the uh, risk that some of these storms could still continue to rotate as long as these storms are in the area. And a lot of these storms will be out of the uh, area uh, by about uh, 10, 11 o'clock at the very, very latest, uh, maybe even before that at 9 o'clock. Uh, but certainly in the short term, we are keeping an eye on that uh, rotation just to the north of Overbrook as it continues to work its way uh, in between Topeka and Lawrence uh, right up towards I-70. So uh, make sure you're staying off of I-70 within that area at least uh, for the next 15, 20 minutes or so as the circulation continues to uh, work its way closer to the interstate. I definitely do not want to be out on the roadways uh, during that particular time uh, as that uh, storm continues to work its way uh, to the north and east. So uh, taking a look at that circulation and uh, just kind of pulses uh, back and forth uh, within that. So let's see if there's an update uh, from the weather service uh, just to see uh, what we have within that uh, circulation. Douglas County has sounded the sirens for the northwestern part of the uh, county. So uh, just something uh, that something to be aware of, even though you are not in the warning polygon at this time, you are uh, still hearing the sirens and the uh, northwestern uh, well, yeah, yeah, you are northwestern portions of uh, Douglas County there. I was thinking of another county. Uh, they're still looking at uh, some circulation uh, near the uh, Richland area as, as well. And so something to be mindful of there. And there's the last frame there. Now it's showing uh, the circulation coming back. And so, again, there's that uh, circulation going, zooming in on that. Uh, and that uh, is certainly pretty impressive there. So you can see the uh, roads. Let me get the roads back on there. Uh, that it was showing up there. So uh, off of Shawnee Heights Road and 105th Street, uh, that's where the circulation is uh, currently at this time. And so definitely if you are in this, if this uh, if this does form a tornado, which as of right now it's still only radar indicated, not observed, that's uh, where it is going to be as it continues to work its way to the north and northeast. And so with this warning expiring at 645, uh, uh, in the uh, northern part of that warning polygon, uh, that would be about the time 640 to 645 would be about the time that it would be crossing I-70. So uh, definitely do not want to be out on the roads during that time. And of course, it's uh, producing heavy rain right now. So even though there's no uh, significant threat, especially with respect to the rotation of the tornado, it is still producing heavy rain at this time along I-70. Just don't want to be out on the roadways at this point in time. Uh, you need to uh, delay your travels at this time because of that. So with this uh, tornado warning, uh, we should be able to get an update here shortly from the weather service in the next couple of minutes, but uh, we are still monitoring this uh, tornado warning that it uh, has a history of producing rotation like it is right now. It uh, did produce a uh, tornado that was observed on the ground in the Eureka area in Greenwood County uh, in the 4 o'clock hour, so just before the newscast started. And since then, we've been keeping an eye on this uh, particular storm and this rotation because of its history of uh, producing that tornado in Eureka. And, uh, of course, uh, that's the reason why. So, again, radar indicated. Uh, not much as far as the hail is concerned. Obviously, it's going to come with the strong winds, uh, even with that tornado. Uh, tornado threat as well. So uh, right now it would be 60 to 70 miles per hour with that uh, severe thunderstorm there as well. Uh, but other than that, uh, taking a look at the uh, rest of northeast Kansas, uh, that's the only thing that is uh, producing anything severe, whether it's a severe thunderstorm warning or a tornado warning. I'm just seeing uh, any potential circulation. Uh, let me see uh, what we have there just the southeast of Council Grove. I'm going to zoom in on that uh, just to see what we have uh, within that uh, particular uh, rotation. That's fairly broad, but it is certainly something that uh, we'll pay attention to as well around the Dunlap Island area. Right now, that's nothing, uh, but I'm not saying that that would uh, produce anything. And then uh, looking at uh, other areas that uh, may have uh, some potential broad circulation, uh, not a whole lot. Uh, so uh, that uh, definitely the circulation and the tornado warning right now uh, shows the uh, best rotation. Uh, coming a little bit more broad there at uh, the last frame there. So uh, it did update uh, since we last looked at it. You can see it's just the west of Clinton as it gets very close to the I-70 corridor. So uh, just something to be aware of as it gets closer to the Lecompton area. Uh, if you're in Lawrence, this is going to push uh, west of you, so you don't have to worry about that, of course, uh, being that it is uh, northeast of Overbrook. Overbrook, uh, you are in the clear, so uh, you can uh, stay and you can get out of your safe shelter uh, from that warning. 
And of course, if you're in the Topeka area and your weather radio has sounded, you do not have to worry about any uh, tornado threat. That is uh, well off uh, to our east of the capital city. It's just going to be non-severe thunderstorms, at least at this point in time. But we do continue with that uh, tornado watch for most of northeast Kansas, including Topeka, until 9 a.m. That does not mean that uh, we will see anything, even with that watch in effect. But uh, we will certainly be uh, monitoring these storms, uh, especially once the uh, storm has uh, weakened with its rotation, and once the warning expires, there still may be a spin-up, uh, even through the 9 o'clock hour, that uh, we'll be keeping an eye on. Uh, seeing that we uh, might have an update here shortly, I'm just uh, keeping an eye on the uh, Weather Service chat just to see what we might have uh, here coming up with any possible new warnings or just an update uh, to what we're looking at. But as of right now, this is uh, the biggest threat uh, that we're keeping an eye on is this tornado warning for the uh, portions of Douglas, Osage, and Shawnee County uh, areas. And again, the uh, biggest uh, cities that are associated with this warning are uh, Richland and Clinton Lake. Uh, those are the cities that still need to stay in, the, the, in your safe shelter for the next uh, 10 minutes uh, from, this, uh, per, uh, from this warning. So, okay, I don't think they're going to update it right now, but uh, definitely uh, something that uh, this will continue to push up to the north. So right now, this is very, very broad rotation. I would not expect them to reissue a warning uh, if it stayed this way. And so we're still keeping an eye on uh, updates as the uh, new new uh, scans come in, if you will, uh, to see if it uh, may tighten up again. But right now, uh, this would probably not uh, be issuing a new tornado warning if this rotation were to stay as it is right now. Just going back to reflectivity, obviously going to reflectivity, uh, the storms that we're monitoring are not showing um, great shapes, if you will, great hooks that we would typically see in a storm uh, that would give us a uh, really good idea of where that tornado is. That's why I've been keeping it on velocity for the most part and keeping an eye on that rotation. I'm just uh, looking at uh, some of our other cameras just to see if we have anything going on and uh, some of our cameras if we can see anything and uh, not seeing anything at this point in time. I'm going to stop this just to keep an eye on uh, that warning, but uh, we are certainly still in the uh, tornado warning going until 645 uh, within this warning. So uh, as we get uh, closer to daylight, of course, uh, being able to see these uh, storms as uh, the sun is coming up, as long as they're not rain wrapped, which uh, there is uh, some rain associated with this, uh, with these storms. And so it's very, very possible that uh, some of these uh, storms are being rain wrapped if there may actually be a tornado on the ground. So you also have to be careful about that. But at least the good news is uh, as we get closer to daylight, uh, we're at least able to see and potentially get an observed tornado if there actually is one on the ground. But uh, don't you have to go into your safe shelter no matter what, whether it's observed or radar indicated, uh, just in case uh, that there is one that uh, does go and uh, touches the uh, surface and eventually gets a tornado to form. But uh, as it gets closer to I-70, uh, very, very, very dangerous to be on I-70 right now within this warning as that circulation is getting close uh, to the interstate between, Douglas, or to, between Topeka and Lawrence. And uh, I would expect the next update to at least get rid of northeastern uh, portions of Osage County and, and maybe even uh, southeastern portions of Shawnee County as it may continue for uh, portions of Douglas County in the next update. But it does go for another uh, 10 minutes uh, within this uh, tornado warning that we're keeping an eye on. This is the only storm that is uh, producing any uh, severe threats at this uh, point in time. Uh, looks like uh, we have a new update. Okay, there was actually uh, a, a, a report of a tornado in the Richland area. So let's see if we can pull that up. Uh, that was in the Shawnee County area, and I don't know if that city is going to actually show up on this in this uh, radar here, but southeastern portion of Shawnee County, there was a report uh, that there was a tornado at 627 in the Richland area. Uh, at 627. So that was 10 minutes ago. And that was when we had that uh, really tight circulation. Now it's pretty broad. Uh, and now it's a lower probability that there would actually be a tornado. I'm not saying that there can't be, but it's a lower probability compared to what it was even 10 minutes ago when it was uh, pushing through the uh, southeastern portions of Shawnee County within that uh, broad rotation. In fact, as we go back and take a look at that uh, rotation pushing through southeastern Shawnee County near the Richland area, might be able to pause it to where it occurred potentially as it uh, worked its way up to the northeast. So you can kind of see it uh, between those uh, frames there. 
So in between these two frames here is likely where it uh, dropped a brief tornado. And so that's where it was. Then I can even bring up, let me go to the uh, now on where it was, but bring up the uh, storm reports and see if that has actually uh, been put on the map as far as where that tornado was. Okay, so there we go. So there's the uh, tornado that um, dropped at 627, uh, pushing down to the uh, southwest. You can see that uh, the tornado and the funnel, that's a funnel to the northeast of the tornado icon. Uh, but uh, right along Highway 54 is where Eureka is. That's where that uh, first tornado dropped. So that's the same storm. It's uh, pretty much gone along the northeastern line, pushing up to the north and east uh, throughout the morning and at times producing that uh, rotation and eventually another tornado that uh, was shown. So going back to velocity, uh, I would think that there would be an update here very shortly to see if what they're going to do. But, oh, looking at that, that is very, very broad. I would not expect them to do anything with that uh, as it is pretty much along I-70 right now with that rotation. And going back to reflectivity and seeing that uh, heavy rainfall uh, within that uh, warning polygon. So even if there is uh, very little rotation, even if the probability of uh, having a tornado within the warning right now is very low, very, very heavy rainfall. So uh, still not the, greatest, uh, not the greatest time to be going along I-70 at this point in time just because of that uh, heavy rain that's pushing through the area. And uh, taking a look at the rest of northeast Kansas, uh, not seeing a whole lot of circulation anywhere else across the WWW viewing area. But uh, as this uh, storm does have a history of rotation, even though the rotation is very weak right now, that doesn't mean that uh, we're out of the woods over the next couple of hours as it continues to work its way to the north and east on uh, producing a, another rotation and possibly another weak tornado as it uh, works its way across uh, northeast Kansas over the course of uh, the next couple of hours. We do have that tornado to watch going until 9 a.m. for most of Northeast Kansas. So that's the reason why we're still going to be monitoring it uh, through the morning on uh, that uh, potential for uh, not only a tornado warning, but even just some severe thunderstorm warnings uh, as well uh, as we're still keeping an eye on the moderate to heavy rain. All right, so I'm here in the uh, tornado. You can see the update on the uh, polygon. I'll zoom back in as I open up the uh, warning and warning bulletin to see what it says. They are going to uh, continue it, certainly, for Douglas and Shawnee County. And let me see what it says here, if they're going to continue it until 6.45. And so they're still going to go on within that for another five minutes uh, within that. And uh, right now, that would be along Kansas Turnpike between miles 187 and 196 as well. Uh, there's actually a new one for Douglas and Jefferson County. So, Rain and Jared, you're done. Uh, this, so we have a new one that will be until 7.15. So the morning show is going to be done as uh, we will continue with this new tornado warning that now includes uh, Oskaloosa, Lecompton. Oh, Zachy, you're right on the edge of this uh, tornado warning. Uh, but uh, once again, uh, just going over uh, some of the uh, tornado safety and uh, making sure that uh, you know what to do in the event of this tornado, which uh, very, very rare to get tornado warnings uh, at this uh, point in time of the day. Uh, but uh, avoid uh, being near windows, doors, outside walls. Cover yourself up with blankets or mattress for protection. Uh, hall or a bathroom closet underneath some stairs are going to be uh, good places uh, to be or of course the basement if you have one and uh, that would be the best place uh, to be in as uh, in a risk of a tornado but taking a look at uh, just a quick look at our tornado watch that goes until 9 a.m. so going back uh, to the uh, warning polygons and taking a look at uh, the new one that is now for uh, portions of uh, Jefferson and Douglas County. The one that's for portions of Shawnee and uh, the other portion of Douglas County will be allowed to expire. Osage County, you are in the clear. If you're in Osage County, uh, you can come out of your safe shelter and uh, you are in the clear from any uh, dangerous conditions. But even with this broad rotation, I think the National Weather Service just decided uh, because it did just produce a uh, tornado uh, just to the south or near Richland in southeastern Shawnee County, and that occurred about 15 minutes ago, uh, that uh, they will continue the uh, warning um, pushing up to the north and east. Let me go back uh, to the beginning of this so I can put back on the warning polygons. 
And uh, so if you are in uh, portions of Douglas, Shawnee County, Jefferson County, your weather radio is going to be going off, but it may not necessarily impact you. So zooming in on the cities that are being impacted uh, from this warning, Ozaki, you're right on the edge of this uh, warning polygon. Oskaloosa, McLeod, you're right on the edge. Oskaloosa, you definitely need to take shelter. Lecompton, you definitely need to take shelter right now. Uh, if uh, you are further to the uh, southwest of Lecompton, you can see that circulation uh, right around the uh, I-70 uh, area. And so that's uh, where the circulation is. You can kind of see a little bit of that uh, red and green together. That is getting awfully close to the interstate. So as I mentioned, you do not want to be in the interstate at this time. And again, this uh, may be a little bit lagged, so it may actually be north of I-70, closer to Lecompton. So Lecompton, you do not have a whole lot of time to get near safe shelter now, but uh, you were warned, uh, even within the warning, if this was uh, going to get extended, that you would be part of it. So hopefully you were already ready to go, uh, getting your shoes on and uh, putting those on. Uh, Perry, you are also in the warning as well. Uh, but Lawrence and Topeka, even though your weather radios might be going off, because it's portions of the Shawnee and Douglas County area. Douglas and or, uh, Topeka and Lawrence are not in the tornado warning. So you do not have to take any action, uh, but you def definitely do not want to be driving towards the warning. So if you have to go into uh, Topeka because you live in Lawrence for work, you have to wait. Do not uh, drive uh, within uh, this area right now between Douglas and Lawrence, between I-70. Uh, do not drive in this area as long as these warnings are along I-70. So you have to wait to go to uh, work uh, because of that. Otherwise, uh, you can see the rotation pushing along I-70 at this time, and uh, this is going to continue to work its way up to the uh, north and east as it gets close to uh, Perry and Oskaloosa within the next half hour. And uh, as I'm uh, continuing to uh, read that, uh, we do have other storms in the area. I'll put this back into reflectivity mode so you can kind of see uh, what uh, some of the other uh, storms are uh, going on right now. Nothing severe, no tornado warnings, no severe thunderstorm warnings, but uh, we do have a couple of stronger storms for other portions of northeast Kansas that may produce 50 to 55 mile per hour wind gusts and pea sized hail. This includes uh, portions of Jackson, Shawnee, and uh, Potawatomi and Wabunsee County. So if you're in Rossville, Eskridge, St. Mary's, Dover, Maple Hill, Paxico, Delia, Willard, and Keeney, uh, you may have uh, some strong wind gusts, 50 to 50 miles per hour and some small hail, but at least at this point in time, uh, nothing severe at this time. Obviously, continue to keep an eye on it, though. Uh, all right, so new update, Douglas and Jefferson County and the uh, tornado warning. Oskaloosa, Perry, Lecompton, and Perry Lake are going to be these uh, cities that uh, are in this uh, tornado warning polygon. And get that polygon back up so we can see uh, where that rotation is and the update from this uh, activity. So it's pushing up to the north of I-70. So you'll notice that uh, the warning is no longer along I-70. Now that doesn't mean uh, you're still not gonna run into some heavy rain or maybe some uh, small hail or gusty winds, but at least the uh, threat for a tornado is has lifted. So if you need to uh, drive along I-70 between Topeka and Lawrence, uh, you are free to do so right now as the rotation has pushed to the north of the interstate as it gets uh, right along the Lecompton area right now and uh, getting close to the Oskaloosa area within the next uh, half hour with this, uh, or the tornado warning going until 7.15. So hopefully you are in your safe shelter right now in the lowest level of your home, putting as many walls around you as possible. Uh, you're putting on a helmet or blanket over your head just in case that uh, you're putting on your shoes because this does have a history of uh, producing a tornado. There uh, did have a weak tornado going back to the reports here just to the uh, southeastern portion of Shawnee County. This was in uh, the Richland area that uh, a brief tornado did touch down as it passed through R Richland. And so this has a history of producing a tornado all the way back into the four o'clock hour, uh, back down in the Eureka area in Greenland and in Greenwood County, and also had a funnel with it as well. That was the other icon that you see there. So uh, this does have a history of uh, tornadoes with the circulation. So just uh, something to be aware of in case we do get more tornado uh, warnings uh, within this uh, particular storm that has that history, uh, going to the lowest level of your home underneath something sturdy and covering your head and stay in the shelter until the storm has passed, putting on your shoes, of course. And of course, we talked about the driving along I-70. Uh, 
uh, you're okay to do it right now because the uh, the circulation part of the storm and the tornadic threat has lifted just to the north of the interstate, uh, but definitely don't be on the roads if you're still in the warning in places like the Lecompton area, Oskaloosa, Ozaki, and McLeod, you're right on the edges of the warning. Uh, it certainly wouldn't be a bad idea to take shelter. It's good practice anyway, but uh, just in case the uh, storm were to uh, turn, it wouldn't be a bad idea just to be ready and uh, be in that uh, shelter uh, just in case. So I'm uh, zooming in on uh, where that uh, particular circulation is, just in the northwest uh, of uh, Lecompton as it gets up towards uh, Highway 24. Uh, it may just uh, clip areas just to the west of Perry uh, within that uh, best uh, circulation within it. But it is uh, getting uh, closer to the Highway 24 area at this point in time to where uh, you definitely don't want to be on Highway 24 within this warning right now uh, because of that. Uh, but uh, we'll certainly... Uh, continues to work its way to the north and east. Now, it's not great uh, when it comes to uh, looking at it on uh, the latest circulation. And as uh, I put this into motion, you can see the circulation as it continues to work its way to the north and east. It's kind of lost it a little bit. I think the National Weather Service just uh, wanting to continue with the tornado warning, even with uh, it, what it is showing up on radar, just in case, uh, just because it, it did drop that uh, tornado in southeastern Shawnee County. But again, Douglas and Jefferson counties, uh, you continue to uh, be in uh, the uh, warning uh, from this. Lecompton, it's pretty much right near you if uh, there is that rotation still existing in the possible tornado. And uh, as it gets up towards the north, getting near the Oskaloosa area as it gets close to 715 on the expiration of this warning. So hopefully we'll have a new update on this. And yes, I do have an update here. And so let me see what we have. So it's going to cancel the uh, tornado warning for Douglas County, but it's going to continue it uh, for Jefferson County. So you can see it's uh, blinking there. So that's the update. I'm going to go ahead and read the uh, what the National Weather Service is saying on this. Uh, this is located near Perry, moving northeast at 45 miles per hour. So uh, if obviously Perry, Perry Lake, Oskaloosa. Those are the uh, major cities within the path of this uh, rotation and the potential tornado that uh, you need to be in a safe shelter at this point in time. Hopefully you've already been in there uh, with this warning being uh, issued about 15 minutes ago, but uh, we're just not seeing a whole lot of uh, rotation within this anymore. Going back uh, to the uh, reflectivity, certainly showing that some moderate to heavy rain within this. So even if there, if there by chance is a tornado within this, it's possible we may not be able to see it just because of how heavy the rain is in this area and it being rain wrapped. So I wouldn't go out looking to see uh, what is out there right now because of that uh, problem, uh, because of how rain wrapped it is. And that's uh, likely one of the biggest reasons why we're not seeing that uh, hook that you typically see in uh, reflectivity and maybe why we're not necessarily seeing a whole lot in velocity when it comes to uh, the, the rotation within the velocity mode. Uh, let's uh, see if we can see anything in the debris. I highly doubt it, but uh, we'll see if there's any potential blue that shows up. It doesn't look like it, so uh, just not uh, seeing a whole lot there. Now, just because we're not seeing a whole lot in any of, the, any of our radars, uh, that doesn't mean that there won't be a tornado. So you still have to take this uh, very seriously in case uh, a tornado does actually uh, develop until 715. So Oskaloosa, Ozaki, certainly Perry and Perry Lake, if you're in those areas, you definitely need to take shelter, even though it does not look impressive at all here on radar anymore. Uh, but uh, and certainly something that uh, has a possibility that this warning might be able to expire a little bit earlier before 715. But until then, you can see the rest of northeast Kansas. So I'll go ahead and put this into motion. Uh, is not in any warnings, just dealing with uh, some moderate to heavy rainfall uh, across the area. And this is going to continue. Uh, tornado watch does it continue until 9 a.m. this morning for much of northeast Kansas. Now, will we, uh, could we see storms continue past 9 o'clock? It's possible, and uh, we'll certainly be keeping an eye on that. But uh, we'll certainly uh, continue to monitor the radar through the uh, morning. As long as there are storms in the area, uh, there is that environment uh, through the morning. Uh, there could be some rotation within these storms. And so we definitely have to be watching out for them very, very closely and uh, continue to keep an eye on them. So going back uh, to the velocity, just to see if there's any possible rotation for the rest of northeast Kansas on some of these storms. And uh, not seeing a whole lot anywhere else. 
And see, it's uh, red north of I-70. That's because the winds are moving away from the uh, radar site in Maple Hill, while the winds are moving towards the radar site uh, south of I-70. That's why you're seeing a lot more green. But anytime you get those uh, colors uh, together, uh, that's when you start to get into some of that uh, rotation. So uh, let me go back uh, to the uh, velocity. Uh, with that warning polygon on, because sometimes it goes away for whatever reason, <laughs> like it is right now. Let me see if I can go back to it. Okay, there we go. Uh, but uh, it's showing that uh, the warning polygon. Uh, this is strictly now for Jefferson County going until 715. And uh, you can see a little bit of that uh, red and green together, just the southwest of Oskaloosa, uh, perhaps. And uh, this area right here is what we're closely monitoring. And so that would be, uh, if there was going to be uh, certainly that rotation, if there was going to be a tornado, uh, that's uh, where it would be uh, within that uh, particular area. And so I'm going to clear that and see what else we have here within that warning polygon. See if I can zoom in close enough to perhaps uh, get a few street uh, streets showing up here. So you can see there's a uh, Ferguson uh, Road on the left part of your screen there, Ferguson Road. There, of course, is Highway 92, Oskaloosa. And so uh, as we continue to keep an eye on uh, this being very, very close to Oskaloosa, let me go ahead and put on a uh, distance tracker to see what the distance would be from that. So about five miles uh, to the southwest, five miles to the uh, southwest of Oskaloosa would be where that potential rotation and potential tornado would be. Let's see if there's an update from the uh, Weather Service. And uh, it looks like uh, the Douglas County tornado sirens have uh, stopped. And uh, so we don't have to worry about that anymore. In Douglas County, as I mentioned, this is strictly for Jefferson County uh, for this uh, particular storm right now. So let me go and zoom back out so you can kind of see where that uh, warning polygon is. I would say even though, Perry, you are still in uh, the warning polygon, uh, that uh, you are in the clear at this time. We're just kind of waiting on the official update uh, from the warning. But if you're around the Perry and uh, Perry Lake area, uh, you'll, you'll be okay as far as uh, coming out of your shelter as it continues to work its way to the north and east towards the uh, Oskaloosa area. Obviously, you can see Ozaki and McLeod are right on the edges and outside of the uh, warning polygon. So... As of right now, you, you're okay if you're in Ozaki and McLeod uh, from that. And uh, with this current rotation, uh, I wouldn't think that there would be a new warning, but if it is, uh, if you're in the Winchester area, maybe you might, might want to start getting ready uh, for a potential tornado warning in your area if this uh, circulation uh, were to continue and the National Weather Service would decide that there might be a need to be a warning downstream from this uh, after 7.15, so uh, I would just uh, get ready for that if you're in the Winchester area. Uh, okay, so now we got an update. You can see it's blinking now, so let's see what we have here from the Weather Service and what they're saying from this. Still radar indicated, of course, so uh, this is a produce, it has a history of producing a tornado with this uh, storm in southeastern Shawnee County and in the Eureka area, south of our viewing area in Greenwood County. So this has a history of producing a tornado. That's why, as long as there's at least some minor circulation, I think the National Weather Service still wants to uh, keep this warning going. So right now, Oskaloosa, uh, it's pretty much uh, going to be um, almost uh, right just to the west of the city itself as it, excuse me, as it gets close to uh, Highway 92 uh, from this uh, particular storm. So uh, Highway 92, you can kind of see that uh, circulation uh, within that. So definitely do not want to be on the roads during this. And of course, if this uh, circulation were to continue, as I mentioned, uh, Valley Falls might be right on the edge of this uh, warning. But uh, Valley Falls, if you want to keep an eye on uh, a possible warning here, Past uh, 715, maybe you want to start getting ready for the possibility that you might need to take shelter. Uh, Nortonville as well, uh, but definitely Winchester as it continues to work its way on its current path. If it continues on its current path, Winchester, you would be in the tornado warning next if this uh, were to continue. But as of right now, uh, this is the uh, only warning that is uh, in effect across northeast Kansas. Uh, just going back uh, to the rest of the area, and just to kind of give you an idea of uh, what else we're seeing. I'm not seeing a whole lot of uh, rotation in other areas. And uh, going back uh, to reflectivity, uh, just getting some moderate to heavy rain uh, for uh, much of uh, the area. For those that are getting the uh, storms uh, from Holton down towards uh, just to the west of Emporia and uh, certainly 
state dealing with that uh, particular storm. This may end up actually being the only storm that may produce severe weather for the rest of this uh, morning. Not saying that other areas may not uh, get some severe weather, but uh, that's the way it is trending. So uh, certainly something that uh, we'll keep an eye on. Again, a tornado watch uh, does remain in effect until 9 a.m. for most of northeast Kansas. So even once this uh, warning does expire, uh, that uh, we will still be keeping an eye on the uh, potential that we might uh, get into uh, some more tornado warnings uh, even after this expires at 715. But uh, zooming back in on Oskaloosa because Oskaloosa, uh, you are pretty much uh, within the path of this rotation. If there is going to be a tornado, it's not, it doesn't look great there on radar. And uh, okay, it just looks like they cancel it. So uh, right now, um, we are actually getting in pretty close to going to 13 News, or uh, I'm sorry, 13 News this morning ending and uh, going to CBS Mornings. I did want to show the eight day real quick. I'm trying to find it here and uh, showing the eight day and then uh, we can head back uh, to CBS mornings because as of right now uh, we are in the clear from any possible uh, tornado warnings at this time. Again, the tornado watch does continue until 9 a.m. The storms will continue through about uh, mid-morning. We might get a brief shower thunderstorm north of I-70 this afternoon. I think a lot of the rain does stay down, uh, in Nebraska, though. It's going to be a warm and windy day with a high of around 80, wind gusts around 45 miles per hour. And then uh, after that, really nice day tomorrow, 79 degrees. We'll get a cold front coming through late Wednesday night into Thursday morning as temperatures cool down in the upper 50s and low 60s. Uh, between Thursday uh, through the weekend. But uh, again, uh, we are out of the woods of that uh, tornado warning. It was being allowed to expire early, even though it was set to expire at 715. So uh, we're still keeping an eye on that. Uh, we'll, of course, uh, continue to uh, keep you updated during CBS mornings at the bottom and top of the hour, uh, giving you the latest radar update and on any potential warnings and, of course, breaking in if needed.